Right now we're going to set up a couple of herb pots right beside the wood-fired oven as well as the kitchen that's going in here a little later. And we're using this Koya potting mix. Now it's brilliant stuff. You buy it in a little slab like that, put it in water and it swells up to 30 litres. Now the beauty of this stuff is that it's brilliant at holding moisture. It's a renewable product. Now it contains controlled release fertiliser, so it's going to keep the plants growing for quite some time. Now once you've done the planting, you need to mulch the pots, particularly potted herbs like this out in the open. And this is just the best thing you can use. It's also made from Koya, and this little tiny block here swells up to 65 litres of mulch. And it is so good at holding the moisture around the plants that it's going to guarantee that they'll take off. One of the most important features of this garden is going to be the outdoor kitchen. And to find the right quality and stay on our budget, we're starting with the leading barbecue retailer in WA, Clean Heat Gas House. This is going to be superb. I think we've got what we want. What do you reckon? Yeah. Hi, how are you going? Hi. Now, look, we're looking to put a barbecue into uh, this garden that we're building. Yeah, barbecue? Yeah. This is an outdoor kitchen. So you've got two grills, grill plates and a hot plate, and the grill's actually optimum for cooking, especially with a beef feeder, and a beef feeder at top of the range barbecues. OK. What you're looking at in there are five 14 megajoule burners, right. which is a really good power, and the plates are very close to the burner, so you won't ever experience stewing with your meat. Okay. Your wok burner here for okay. Fantastic. pots, crayfishing, all that sort of stuff. Makes life easy. It's stainless steel? Yep, yep, high grade stainless steel. Okay, and um, it seems to be module, so you can also have the sink. Yeah, there's a sink module. Yeah. There's the, obviously the condiment module, and you can also get a flat bench top module if you need more bench space, wow. which also has room underneath for a fridge. I think we've got our outdoor kitchen. Yeah. Thanks, for Great. Michelle. One of the essential jobs in building as well as gardening is getting the base right. This is about to be a beautiful area of lawn and the foundation, well it's a mix consisting of gingin red loam which is great for holding moisture, some lovely clean sand and lots of organics. This is going to be the perfect base for the perfect lawn. The way we water gardens has changed dramatically in the last 10 years. Once upon a time, we'd be putting sprinklers that throw water over the top of the lawn. These days, we're using subsurface irrigation systems like this. We are, Trev. This is Techline AS, the, the very best drip line that's on the market at the moment. And the thing I love about these systems is that you can see the little drippers here. So there's water emitted from this at what's the rate these days? 1.6 litres an hour. OK, so it's a very small amount of water. And the great thing about it is the line lays down like that. So the dripper is dropping water straight into the soil. Plants' roots, in this case the grasses' roots, is growing right down deep following that water down, which means it handles hot, dry conditions so much better, doesn't it? It does. It's fantastic. And this being a pressure compensated nozzle too, you can put it on uneven ground and still get even watering. Brilliant okay. system. Let's get it here. Yep. Now, when it comes to setting up a garden, one of the most critical things that you've got to do is make sure you start with the very best quality plants. That's why we've only sourced the plants for this garden from the state's leading suppliers, people like Waldex. And they've got a ripper I want to show you. This one here is called a Eucoma. It's a lily. It's also known as the pineapple lily, and it gets its name because of that pineapple-like head on the top. But look at these beautiful flowers. These are going to be absolutely stunning. <laughs> There's a great spirit of camaraderie on the project. All of the tradespeople have helped each other to get to the deadline on time. And there's been a real excitement as the various elements come together to transform tragic into Hollywood. Yeah, go. Alicia's interior design skills are really coming to the fore here. She's chosen a colour for the cube that I wouldn't have thought of, silver. Now, Kingsley, this is the Solver silver colour, isn't it? Now, how are you applying it? Just by brush, Trevor. We put one coat of uh, water-based undercoat mm -hmm. over the timber, mm -hmm. followed by two coats, the bright glow silver, Solver bright glow OK, silver. and it's a gloss enamel, so it's yes, going it to have is. a really nice, solid finish. Yes, and it should be durable outside as well.
Now, some folks are horrified just at the idea of planting out a lawn because of the perception that it wastes water. Well, I happen to love lawns, and I reckon it's the best surface ever for kids and pets to play on. But it also unites the landscape and keeps it beautiful and cool. Palmetto keeps its colour all year round, and it's a water-wise champion. The Water Corporation recommends planting drought-tough lawns like this to save buckets of water every day. A couple of hints to get your new lawn off to a great start. Apply a layer of underlay immediately before putting out the turf. It's loaded with organics. Number two, you often find loose bits of turf along the edges. Just a bit of sand worked into that edge like that will help to surround those stems and roots with soil and make sure that it takes off like a rocket. There's two very important secrets to having gardening success here in Western Australia. One is to make sure you start off with the best quality plants. And here's a sure sign that you're getting really good quality. If you can see this little tree on the side of these pots, well, it means it's been grown by Banara Nurseries. Now, they are an amazing West Australian success story. They are the biggest grower in the Southern Hemisphere and they produce beautiful plants like this wonderful Grevillea Superb. It is just magnificent. We're always using their stock on all of our jobs. Now, the second one comes to when you putting plants into the ground. Now we've got some lamandras. This is seascape. Lovely blue foliage. And when you put them in, you want to be using some of this stuff. This is called sea sol. Now it's a planting gel, not the liquid that you're thinking of, but actually a gel that absorbs moisture. In this case it absorbs all the sea sol and then releases it back into the soil to stimulate root growth. To get this going you use about one cap for a 200 litre pot. And if you have a look at that, you can see that plant is going to go straight in on top of it, ensuring your new plants get off to the best possible start. We've selected plants for jasmine sandpit garden that provide shade, flower and fruit. The crepe myrtle will flower in summer and the apricot in spring. Well, the pool fence is now in place. You can see this beautiful safety glass. You cannot break this stuff. It is so strong. But the important thing is it allows you to see into the hot tub and for mum and dad when they're sitting in watching the kids playing out here, well, they can see out nice and clearly. These fences are absolutely brilliant. And of course the gate, well we've got the latch on this side, it means the kids can't get hold of it. And of course it's set on this side so that if they're trying to push in, well they just can't push the door open. There's no risk of them getting in. These safety fences are brilliant. Well, we're running out of time. We have got so much going on at the moment. We're finishing off the pathway. We've got edging going in. There's still the curtains to go up. We've got pebbles. We've got furniture arriving. It is absolutely flat out. And after the break, you're going to see it all finished off and it is going to look sensational.